The 20th of April 1999 was beginning just like a normal day in Littleton, Colorado. Some people were on their way to work, some others were celebrating, and children were at school. The cafeteria of Columbine High School was full of students having lunch. Nobody noticed that someone had left two big black bags under a table. Meanwhile, a young guy was sitting in his black BMW at a parking lot outside the school, checking the time. His name was Dylan Klebold, a 17-year-old student. Every day at school had been a torture to him, yet not today. Today it would be different. Dylan was looking stylish. He had a black trench coat and sunglasses on him. At a second parking lot, Eric Harris, an 18-year-old student, was sitting in his grey Honda Prelude. Just like Dylan, he was skipping his classes. He didn't like school and he hated his classmates. But he knew exactly what that day was gonna be like. He had thought about it many times and made a schedule in his diary. Dylan and him had filmed many fictional videos, and today one of those videos was to become true. Then he noticed Brooks Brown near the parking lot. Brown had been a bitter enemy to him. Yet by that moment their conflict had been mainly over, and Harry's anger had diminished. Hey Brooks, he said, you know what? I like you now. Get out of here. Go home. Harris checked the time once again, got out of the car and took a black sport bag. He was wearing a black trench coat and sunglasses. At 11.17, in the school cafeteria full of students, inside one of the two black bags under a table, a clockwork triggered a detonator and… nothing happened. The students were still having their lunch, telling each other stories and laughing. Meanwhile, two guys in black were already approaching the school building. In just a few seconds, what marked the 20th of April 1999 as day of horror in Columbine would start. At 11.19, the first shots burst out near the western school entrance. Rachel Scott, a 17-year-old student, became the first victim. Then they started shooting at other students on the lawn, killing and wounding a few. Dylan went to the cafeteria to see why the bombs failed to go off, but soon he returned back to Eric. Passing by injured and paralyzed Sean Graves, he just said, Sorry, dude. Patty Nielsen, a teacher, was at the western entrance. She knew that Harris and Klebold liked filming, and she thought it was another movie being filmed. She decided to tell them to stop it right away. But a shot and pieces of the glass door injuring Brian Anderson changed her decision quickly. She ran to the library, told the students to get on the tables and called 911. At 11.22, a Columbine assigned officer Neil Gardner heard on his police radio that a girl was lying on the ground. He drove up to the school. Suddenly, there were sounds of shooting, and another radio message said there was a shooter in the school. The officer opened fire to divert the shooters. A firefight began, during which both sides changed a few magazines, but nobody was hurt. Harris and Klebold entered the first floor of the school building, tossing around bombs, most of which failed to explode, and the officer called for backup. Teacher Dave Sanders tried to save the students by taking them from the cafeteria to a classroom when they would barricade the door. Attempting to help other students leave the library, he got badly injured. As the shooters left, he was taken to a classroom and provided first aid. Despite that, he bled to death within a few hours. At 11.29, Eric and Dylan entered the library, where 56 people were hiding at that moment. A massacre took place here. Harris and Klebold would approach students, ask them tricky questions, and if they didn't like answers, murder them. 
At approximately 11.34, Eric Harris pointed his gun at one of the students and ordered, identify yourself. It was John Savage, one of Klebold's friends. Klebold, what are you doing? Savage asked, horrified. Oh, just killing people. Run, Klebold said. Without more questions, Savage fled the library. In just seven and a half minutes, they killed 10 people and wounded 12 more. At some point, one of the shooters said, enough shooting maybe? We have knives as well. Yet they left the library. The investigation would show that they had enough ammunition to kill everyone in it. After leaving the library at 11.49, they went back to the cafeteria, detonated a bomb in it, and began walking the empty building, firing around blindly, pouring out their anger. At 12 pm, they returned back to the library, which the remaining students had already fled. There they came up to the windows to watch the bombs at the parking lot going off, but none of them exploded. Then they started shooting at the policemen and medical personnel. By that moment, special forces had already taken their positions around the school building. They don't have any specific information about the number of shooters or their weapons. Nonetheless, an assault is prepared. The deputy sheriff takes a CNN helicopter and flies over the school area for surveillance. The special forces, by using a fire engine as a shield, slowly get closer to the building. The emergency personnel use an armored car to pick up the injured and take them to hospitals. At 12.11, a person is detected on the roof, who initially is thought to be a sniper, but he turns out to be a repairman. Due to unconfirmed information about bombs, the police is waiting for a bomb disposal brigade and cannot take any actions. The situation is even worse since the telephone network is overloaded and inoperable. At 12.39, the assault units get the first floor plan. At 12.41, there is information that there can be several shooters in the building, as well as hostages. The assault units call for backup. At 12.50, snipers are positioned on the roofs close to the building. At 1 pm, the building storm starts. SWAT officers, who have a lot of experience under their belt, break into the school building prepared for hell. Nobody is aware that Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold have been dead for 52 minutes. After returning to the library and shooting out the windows, they both killed themselves. The operation took four more hours. The classrooms were inspected and people evacuated the building. It took one more day to discover all the victims' bodies. One more week to complete the inspection and search for explosive materials. Day of Horror in Columbine had taken 14 students' lives. It had been the most terrible tragedy for the previous 30 years that shocked the public. To achieve their goals, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold used the following weapons. Eric Harris had a Savage Springfield 67H pump-action shotgun and a High Point 995 carbine. He fired respectively 25 and 96 shots. Dylan Klebold had a Tech 9 semi-automatic handgun and Stevens 311 double-barreled shotgun. He fired 52 and 12 shots respectively. The two shooters made 99 bombs and Molotov cocktails. They used several homemade clockworks as well as fuses. The Columbine tragedy had shaken the people of America, as well as the whole world. It raised questions that we still struggle to give answers to. Debates on what was the cause of it take place even today. And unfortunately, it gave inspiration to some followers, a few of whom managed to surpass their predecessors. Daddy wants a long day He'll be coming home late Yeah, he's coming home late And he's bringing me a surprise Cause dinner's in the kitchen And it's packed in ice I've waited for a long time 
Yeah, the slide of my hand is now a quick pull trigger a reason with my cigarette And so your hips on fire I'm the other kids with the pumped up kicks You better run, better run I'll run my gun Now the other kids with the pumped up kicks You better run, better run That's it in my palate all the other kids with the pumped up kicks you better run better run out run my gun now the other kids with the pumped up kicks you better run better run faster than my bullets